Hey, this is Daniel Grove, and in this video, I'm gonna show you a really cool trick of how to create random values, a bunch of them, to control your materials and give your materials infinite variety in some really creative ways. If you've watched my videos in the past, you may have picked up on the fact that I like to get as much out of my work as possible, and I like to work as little as possible at the same time. Sometimes it's actually achievable, and in this instance, this is a really cool way to get a lot of result out of a little bit of work. Now, I'm using Blender 3.5. I say that because nodes change every few versions, so something might change in the future, but I think what we're gonna be used today is pretty universal, and it works in cycles as well as Eevee. So let's get started. First, we're gonna create the scene, which is the easiest part of the whole thing, and then we'll get to the nodes. I just created a cube because my default cube is deleted. I never use it. Tab into edit mode. Control B to create a bevel. I'm gonna use my mouse wheel up to create a few uh, segments of that bevel to make it nice and smooth. Get out of edit mode with tab, W, and I'm gonna do auto shade smooth 30 degrees. If that control B didn't work for you, you'll need to enable bool tools. I believe that is an add-on that allows you to do the control B shortcut for beveling and it's really handy. I'm gonna to go to an above view of seven, tab into edit mode and shrink it down just a little bit because I'm gonna create a bunch of these on the grid and I want there to be a gap in between all the cubes, maybe a little bit smaller, there we go. Now before I make a whole bunch of these cubes, I'm gonna save myself a little bit of work in the future, create my material and there we go. Now we don't have to apply material to a bunch of cubes, Shift D, I'm gonna type X and then two on my numpad. So it's moving on the X by two units, enter. Now I can press Shift R a bunch of times and make a whole bunch of copies. That should be good. Shift D to duplicate and now on the Y, two units. And now Shift R a whole bunch of times depending on how many cubes you want. There we go. And because I have a little bit of OCD, I'm gonna center these like so. Get a cool camera angle with my 3D viewport set. I'm gonna type Control Alt Zero, which uh, sets your active camera to your 3D view. And there we go. We're done with the scene and the modeling. That's as little modeling as I've ever done in any tutorial of mine. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's create some nodes. I'm gonna show you how to make a node group to generate as many unique and random numbers as you want, all from one node group. You could have it output 20 unique random numbers and use those in your materials to do whatever you want. So I just split my view into two. I'm gonna change the top one into the shader editor. Click on any of the cubes so that I can view my material that I just created. And let's start building this random uh, number generator. But let me explain a few basics along the way so that you're not just copying me, but you're actually learning and understanding what the heck's going on. Because it is a little weird at first. First, let's talk about some different ways that we have available to us to create random numbers. And then I'll show you an improved way on how to get multiple random numbers per object. So the first basic setup is right here. We're using the object info uh, a node, which gives us a random number between zero and one for each unique object. Even if you do an alt shift, which creates a linked copy, it still is a unique object and has its own object ID, which I think is what creates uh, this random number. This is running into a hue slider, which is changing the red into all the different colors around the circle wheel. Now this is only one random number per object. If I also use this random number for roughness and metallic, they're all basically copycatting each other. So higher hues will have higher metallicity and higher roughness and vice versa for the lower ones. And I don't want that. I want it to be more unique. And that's why I developed this system. The other way to generate a random number is the geometry node, which has a random per island output. If I plug this into the hue slider in cycles only and in the rendered view only, can I see each island of separated faces has its own unique value. So that's pretty cool. Each separated chunk, such as this thing, which is not you know properly modeled. I know I don't follow any of the modeling rules that a lot of you more traditional modelers have. Um, I don't care about that stuff. I got stuff everywhere because it looks cool and it's easy to make. And that creates random numbers per island. I don't really like that because what if I want one value for a whole complex object, which has all these separate pieces like this, not very helpful. You know, if you plug it into the color as well, you get the grayscale, which this is really cool, actually. I use this technique a lot for my sci-fi panels. When I want random values for each panel chunk or piece or, you know, pipe ring, this is great, but not what I'm going for in this tutorial. So that brings us back to technique number one. If each object has a random number as well as a unique object index from this output, we can combine these in a clever way to create unlimited output numbers. Let's start building that chain. So first I am going to turn this into a, a node group where it just works best and it's portable. You can import it as an asset. You can use multiple of them in one material. Let's create a math node, Let's keep it on add. Next, create a white noise texture right here. Let's move our BSDF and our hue over here out of the way as well as our output. There we go. 
Now make sure to switch your white noise texture to 4D. The white noise texture basically creates what I personally think of as a static black and white pixels with all the values in between, you know, grayscale noise basically of the finest detail you can imagine. So based on where we sift our W factor, which is scales through the fourth dimension, it's gonna give us a new output value and we can use that as our random number. But the white noise texture is essential for creating multiple random values because this color output is RGB. So we instantly have three values coming out of here that are all different. And we're gonna create multiple of these kind of cascading downwards to create multiple outputs. So let's get that started here. I'm gonna plug in my object index to the second input of the value add right there. And then the output of our add, basically our total, is gonna to become the vector, which gives a new kind of placement for the white noise starting point. And the W factor is gonna come from our random value. This way, each created object is not gonna have the same starting point for the noise, and of course it's gonna have a random number, so it's kinda of like double random, and it's I've just found it to be the best solution. Now let's split this color output into three things by piping in SEP for separate, and do separate color. Plug it in there, and now we have RGB. So let's plug in the red into hue, try the blue, try the green, try the blue. As you can see, totally different values, very helpful. Now let's create this into a node group by selecting them all and control G for group. Now we are going to use one outside number, which is gonna be our seed. Plug that into your first um, adding value there so that we can set our seed value that comes in, adds it to the object index, which is unique for every object, and then that moves the noise. The random value will sift the noise and that gets split into R, G, and B. Now let's plug in red and green to these group outputs and let's tab to get out back into the normal shader editor. Again, if you tab into a node group, it goes into basically edit mode uh, and then tab to go back out. So this is our node group we just created if we press in for the side panel, we can customize it by giving it a name. I'm gonna name it rando number for the name, for the label, and for the data block name right there. And you can even give it a little color if you wanna, right, some identifying color in the background, awesome. We can name these inputs and outputs if we tab into edit mode for that node group. Click on the right, the group node, and here we go. So our value incoming is gonna be called seed, that's our, our seed number. And then the outputs, I'm just gonna give them all numbers. As we add more, we're gonna go downwards in the numbers and uh, let's tap out of edit mode. There we go. Disco party lights as we sift through the seed values. So let's um, create multiple random numbers now from this. We're gonna duplicate that math, the white noise and the separator. So uh, select them all three holding shift and then shift D and put it down uh, right about there. And I am going to arrange this like this. Just visually, it makes the most sense. I'm gonna make a few more, there we go. All right, so this add number right here is gonna go into the first add of each of these math nodes, just like that, the first input. And then for the second input, what's gonna go in there is the color from the previous separate color node, which gives us basically a, a new random seed for this second layer and then this blue is gonna be the new seed for this layer. So as you see, as it progresses down the line, it's giving us uh, a new set here, a new set here of random numbers. Each of these layers is a random number. And finally there, and as you can see, you can literally keep going into infinity and the random numbers will always be different from the previous one. And they're all controlled by a starting seed value right here. Now, the last thing we need to do for this setup for it to work is we have to transfer this random uh, number out here to all the other white noises. So this first one is already set up there for the W factor. Uh, now we just need to connect it to all the others. If you have a whole bunch of these going downwards like I did in another setup that I did, you can do add layout and reroute. This just makes a little kind of bridging dot um, that you can reroute from. So it's just easier because you can actually move this around anywhere you want. And then from there, you can connect like that. This is also how people make like you know, fancy like setups with all the like nicely laid out angles and all that stuff. That's, that's how that all works. Um, and you know, I like that. I like looking at it, but I just don't have time to do all that. So I'm going to control X that first one and that one. There we go. It just makes it easier to reach down in further places instead of going from the top to the bottom, top further to the bottom and just use a reroute. All right. So once we have the W's ran, we can start connecting all these um, random numbers to the node group output over here. So just drag them over. And once we have them all set up, we can give them the uh, number names. 
And once this no group is done, then the real fun begins. Might have been a little easier if I had zoomed out. <laughs> All right, so click on your node output right here. Press in for the side panel. And here we can rename them. So I need a little bit more room. I can actually collapse the inputs because we're not doing that. And you can drag this down here. Uh, to do this really fast, just use your tab. So I'm going to name this three. Tab button on my keyboard, then four, tab five, and so on and so forth. Make it real fast. I love efficiency. That's what I'm all about. And there you go. You're done. If you want to make this as an asset so you can use it in later projects in your asset browser, change your outliner to view the blend file itself. Go down to node groups. And assuming you've named it, which I did, rando number, I'm going to right click and say mark as asset. There we go. Now we will be able to see it in the asset browser and drag and drop it into future projects. Now let's tab out of here. Now look at this. We have a seed value and we have completely rando numbers here, which we can plug into all kinds of things. For example, saturation, metallic, roughness, transmission, emission color, and emission strength. Now for that color, we are gonna need a hue saturation. So let's do that trick we did earlier where the random number actually drives the hue slider and that final output goes into the emission. Awesome. Now from here, let me show you how to further customize this to get a little bit more control out of your randomness, right? It sounds kind of oxymoronic, but you do have some really cool tricks uh, just using the curve node. You can use the color ramp, but I, for this, kind of like to use the curve, uh, which for me is very natural because I'm a Photoshop guy, I'm a photographer, um, but let me show you how to use this. So let's say we don't want all of our cubes you know, we don't want as many of them emitting. A lot of them are emitting right now. Their, their, their emission is greater than zero. So they're emitting light. There's a few of these have, that have emission at zero. Like this guy right here, looks like it's got zero emission. Uh, this over here, they're not really glowing, but we want less emission. So let's control the curve of this value. So down here is the zero value of no glow. And up here is the one value of all the way glow. So let's make more zeros by moving the zero point to the right. And now you can see instantly a lot more of them have zero amount of glow uh, emission strength. If we do this, only about one quarter of them are getting some glow. And even some of that quarter are here in the bottom area. So they're still in like, you know, dot one, dot two, dot three, dot four, dot five in the middle right here. And then of course up here, all the way solid one. So this is kind of like a probability filter, right? You can control it. Maybe you want a few really low glowing ones, but um, you know, mostly high ones, you can do this. You can make a curve. So there's a few low glow, um, not a lot of medium ones, but a lot in the top, about equal in the top and the bottom scope. And um, yeah, controlling that curve is a really great way to control how likely things are gonna turn out. So let's say you want a less metallic ones. So let's make a curve for the metallic slider. I'm gonna uh, click the X button on these little control points. So right here is the normal zero to one value. If we went less metallic, we can turn uh, the value of uh, one down to 0.5. So the highest metallic value it's gonna give is now 0.5. If we go down here, this is about dot 25. That's the highest value you'll ever get is dot 25. There are some below that mixed around here, you know, like the little plot, I'm gonna call it the plot chart of random numbers. Imagine little dots scattered around in here. If we want the metallic uh, random number to start at 0.5, we can do this. Now the lowest value is 0.5 or half metallic, and then there's full metallic up here. So all of these cubes are at least 0.5 metallic at this point. Okay, remember you can press H on a node to collapse it if you have a lot of nodes. Clean things up a little bit, I like to do that. The other way to control this is with the mapping range, which uh, you know is really just the same thing, just a different way of doing it. You want to mess with um, these bottom values mostly, but these top two values can create contrast, um, similar to the way that a color ramp can do it. But that curve is just way more visual and easy for me. So I'm gonna select this, press Control X to delete it, but keep the noodle intact, pretty handy. Let's add some noise and add a randomization to the noise. So I'm going to use a bump first. So bump node, plug it in, create a Musgrave texture, plug that into height, and let's add lots of detail and a point to dimension. Although these numbers are going to be completely randomized in just a second. Now, if I control shift click this Musgrave texture to preview using the Node Wrangler, I can see only what's coming from that Musgrave texture. And look at this, they're all in the same position. How boring and non-random. 
The first thing we can do to fix this is use a random value to move this noise around so that each cube has a unique noise pattern. Click on the noise node, press Control T. This uses a node wrangler to create these two nodes and the location is what we wanna modify. So let's grab a random number up here. And I know this is not vector data, but if we plug it in, it just works. Now let's collapse those with letter H and play with the scale and even the detail um, using some random numbers. So let's grab number nine, which is not used yet. Plug it into scale. And let's use a mapping range for this. I like to use mapping range for these number type things because to me, you know, I just, I know scales. Um, so the minimum scale I wanna have is dot two and the maximum is two. So we have some cubes with a tiny, uh, a small size. Let's do dot zero one for that minimum actually. So we see some cubes have small noise, some have large noise, but it's all really crispy and detailed. Now let's add some variety with randomness to the dimension slider so that some will have a really gritty texture of around, you know, dot one, and then some will be a little bit more soft and blurry around maybe one as a whole number. So let's do that. Grab a random number, random value number 10, plug it into dimension. Let's collapse this range because we're not using it and then duplicate it right here. You can expand it by pressing H. So now we're going to go from, what was it? Dot one up to a whole number of one. There we go. Cool. So now the noise has a lot of variety. It's big and small. It's soft and detailed as well. Great. Now let's uh, preview the final uh, BSDF here to see what the bump looks like. Oh, we also need to vary the amount of bump. So let's grab random number, random value number 11, plug it into strength. And I'm going to turn my distance down to like dot three. It doesn't have to be that intense, maybe even dot one. It's fine. Still looks realistic and nice. And there we go. Some uh, uh, cubes have full bump and some have lower bump. You can make it on average less bump as a whole. If you slide your bump down lower, if you raise it up, it's gonna be on average much more. We're basically enhancing that random number to be higher or lower um, with the curve. So I'm gonna put it kind of on a downward sloping curve like that. A lot of these are really pale. So let me give some randomness to the value here. So some are dark and some are light of the very first color node we did. So we can duplicate, uh, you, you can reuse random numbers. Just remember that you're splitting so that, you know, if, if this is also going to metal, then the ones that have a certain value for metal will have the same value for, you know, the brightness, for example. Um, or we can just go back into the node group and create a bunch of more <laughs> new random numbers. So that is the basics of it. There are some more advanced things I could do, such as uh, using a random value to cross fade between, you know, uh, say 10 different random image textures. You can preload them using the mix node and the random number will decide which texture is used in the final output. That is a great way to create instant variety without having a whole bunch of textures to manage. And it's just good for small assets like rocks and greeble panels. I'm actually working on a procedural planet randomizer, which randomizes everything from the terrain size and type, uh, the amount of ocean, the color of the atmosphere, the color of the terrain, cloud details, different types of noise patterns. It's all totally randomized. I think right now, let me go to the uh, texture for it. <laughs> Let's see how crazy it is right now, the, the actual material. The green chunk is just for the terrain, the blue for the water, and the light blue for the clouds. You know, there's definitely a lot of improvement. I don't know if I'm gonna sell this in the future or just put it out there for a free, you know. I, I guess it depends on how good I can get it um, and, you know, how much work I put into it, if I'll if I'll put a price tag on it or not. Because uh, this is kind of this is my, my first version. I haven't gotten super uh, in-depth yet. But, you know, it's pretty fun. If you need a quick planet, just, just copy the copy the sphere and boom, you got a random new seed, a random, completely new planet. That's never been seen before, never been made, endless varieties. <laughs> and to me, that is just super cool. <laughs> hey, I like this one. Let's go to this planet, shall we? Okay, one more trick in this video. I'm gonna show you, as promised, how to use a random number trick to display random image textures in one material. Let's start by making a plane, shift A plane. I'm gonna press period on numpad and then seven. Split my view. And on my top view, if my mouse is over the top view editor, if I press shift F3, it switches to the shader editor. It's a new trick I just learned. Make a new material. And let's start. Now, because this is a new Blender project, I'm going to have to append the node group we made previously. Okay, here's the blend file. Go down to node tree and rando number. 
Shift A, group, random number. Let's put it over here. Now, follow these instructions carefully. I'll try to zoom in where I feel it would be helpful to see the details, but let's start building this crazy setup. It's really cool how it works. And uh, there's a lot of different uses you can find for this. So Shift A, let's get started with the image texture. Shift A, color ramp. Shift A, mix. Change this to color mode. And we're going to open just any random image. Let's see what I have in my textures folder. Uh, here we go, UV test. We're gonna plug this into A, make another image below, open a different image. Use this uh, French floor tile. <laughs> I replaced the floor in a photo studio with that tile in Blender actually. And uh, it was really handy. Um, plug in the color of the ramp to the mix factor and then the random number into the uh, color ramp. We're gonna call this the switch because this mix factor is gonna switch between image A and image B. And then this uh, color ramp, I'm gonna call the switch threshold. So let's say we wanna have four images, four random images appearing on each mesh you know, duplication, we're going to divide one by the number four, four images. So that's 0.25. So this first switch threshold needs to be at 0.25, which means in the black zone, the switch is off, which is image A. If the random number gets above 0.25, it's going to be in the white zone, which is on, which then fades 100% to image B. And we're going to go down the threshold all the way to uh, image number four. So let's do that. So grab these. Let's, let's, let's arrange them kind of diagonally like this. It just works for me visually. Grab the image, the bottom image, the ramp, and the mix. And we're going to copy them down uh, diagonally like that. And then one more time with Shift R, we'll actually copy your duplicate function or uh, keyboard shortcut. Okay. Now plug in the first switch to A of switch two, and then switch two into A of switch three. And then finally, this output goes to base color. We need to open up different images down here. So image number three will be this mosaic image. And then image number four can be the backroom's wallpaper. <laughs> All right, so let's fix these thresholds. So we already have switch number one set up, which is dot 25. The next one will be dot five, which means that the random number is here. It's image A, which is actually up, goes back to switch one. And, but if the random number is above dot five, then it's over here and it's on, which is image B. And it kind of cascades downwards to the next set. And this one needs to be dot seven five. So if the random number is dot seven five or higher up to one, then it will be the last image right here. All right, now the last thing we need to do, I, I forgot this, is we need to move this uh, random number we're using, the same random number. We're only using one random number for this whole operation. So number one in this case, and it needs to go through the input of each color ramp. That's where the random number gets in and gets you know switched or not. So let's uh, duplicate this plane a bunch of times and see what happens. Shift D, X, two, there we go. If, as I press Shift R to repeat that, we're getting random images that I've of course pre, you know, pre-selected. There we go, pretty sweet. You can use the same technique to switch between entire PBR sets using, instead of the mix color, you can use the mix shader and basically cross shade between, you know, four, 10, I don't know how many PBR is you wanna load into one huge material, but it can get pretty complicated if you want it to be. And uh, you can also use um, some mapping. So let's do a control T. And let's copy this mapping data to all of four images. And we're going to use a, another random number, random number number two, to control the location. So they will each have a random offset of location in the UV. There we go. See, they're not, they're all kind of off and crooked and <laughs> crazy. You could do number three for scale. That's interesting. Very choppy and random. And you can even do rotation. But I do suggest uh, using the combine. X, Y, Z, plug in your random number only into Z. We're not gonna rotate X and Y. And this is a mistake that I made on my recent tutorial where I showed you how to untile a texture on a large plane or ground or surface. I made a mistake of doing random rotation on X, Y, and Z. And as one of my commenters noted, that introduces some problems. And I appreciate him for telling me what I did wrong because I did not even think about that. So this is how you, X, this is how you rotate an image with vector is just with Z. Um, based on the normals. So it'll rotate it, you know, rotating that way on the Z axis. So pretty cool. Um, again, I don't know what you're going to use this for, but hopefully I've inspired you and kind of uh, 
showing you a few weird things that you can do and uh, you go go henceforth and use this in some creative ways. Let me know down in the comments how you think you could use this in your types of scenes. Personally, I just do a lot of environmental design, like, you know, nature, trees and grass, and I do sci-fi stuff. So greebles and pla planets and, you know, uh, panels and spaceships and stuff. So there's definitely a lot of room for randomization and scenes where there's a copy of the same object all over the place, but I don't want them to all look the same and tile and be boring. So, um, but I'd love to hear about you guys, what y'all think about this. I love seeing y'all's renders. Email me something you're proud of and thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.